Hey, we're inside the Cube. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.TV, and we are here to talk to Jim Blakely, who leads the Intel Strategic Systems Integration, Architecture Engineering, and his team works on all the integration architecture with the vendors uh, out there and all, all solution architectures. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you. I'm here with my co-host Dave Vellante, and uh, Intel made a good investment in the cloud a couple of years ago, uh, past five, ten years, yeah. getting into the cloud. So, so tell us what's happening right now with with your group and Intel. Obviously, Intel. Everyone knows is powering a lot of the, all the servers and desktops and other devices and embedded systems and a variety of applications out there. So tell us what, what, what's going on with you and your group. Well, so for us, the cloud it really has a, a two big components. One is with a lot of the big cloud service providers, the Facebooks and Amazons and Googles and, you know, in China, Baidu and, and Tencent and all the rest. Um, and they've been driving a lot of architecture innovation in terms of how data centers come together, solutions come together, applications come together, um, which has been feeding a lot into um, you know, what we do. It's been helping our business enormously over the last um, few years as those companies have grown. But maybe more importantly, they've been setting the pace for the rest of the industry that we see reflected in the private cloud as companies look to get to a much better, lower cost of compute on the, on the, um, on the enterprise, the traditional enterprise side. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunity for those innovations that have been happening on the public side to make their way over, and we're seeing that in spades right now. So on siliconangle.com and wikibon.org, we've been covering cloud mobile and social for the past couple of years, and you know, we've been talking here on theCUBE at a lot of the events that we've been doing, uh, that, that the notion of systems is changing, right? With mm -hmm. the cloud and mobile, um, the use cases are obviously driving a lot of change. I mean, Facebook's one big example of an application there. Right. So what are you seeing right now, Jim, about the, these new use cases? Obviously, the architecture changes, and you know, big data is playing a role from using, uh, using machine learning techniques to help do some configuration to a variety of other systems problems that are being solved architecturally through new, ar new, new technology and methodology. So could you share with, with our audience out there what your view is of what's new now, and how's that mm -hmm. compared to what was old? And help us kind of sure. clear that line of new and old. Sure. I mean, I think um, I'll, uh, I'll give Google some kudos here, particularly Luis Barroso a couple years ago wrote a, wrote a great paper called um, um, the, data, the Warehouse Scale Computers in the, in the Data Center. And his basic premise was the data center is now the system. Um, and we, we're seeing that in spades. And it's, if you look at big data type problems and you know, high performance computing more generally, cloud computing, it's all about turning the data center into a system. That's one component of it, which is having sort of dramatic impacts on the data center overall. The second part of it is um, the whole client, distributed client environment, as we've seen the takeoff in mobile devices, and um, what's maybe not so visible to a lot of people is around embedded devices, machine to machine, um, internet of things kinds of solutions that are coming to, to improve agriculture, to improve grid management and, and um, a whole host of industries looking at how they take advantage of the lower cost of, of computing at the edge and computing at the endpoint to, to, to build better applications, more you know, satisfying applications for their end users. You know, innovation is a funny thing, and Intel obviously has the heart of innovation. I mean, you guys uh, built Silicon Valley up and to, to what it is today, and obviously going back to the roots of HP, kind of the founder of Silicon Valley. So you guys are no stranger to the innovation. Um, but our observation is, is that innovation always has kind of a, we've seen that movie before factor, but with a <laughs> twist. Um, what would you say is going on now relative to cloud, mobile, and social that you say, you know, that paradigm is kind of like that one, but a little bit of a tweak. There's always never a one-to-one. -one. Right. You mentioned distributed computing. Obviously that's one. Uh, things are connected. Systems is, is a systems operating system. So these are all concepts that have been researched, implemented maybe. What are you seeing? What's your view there from a geek standpoint? Of, yeah, this is a little bit of that and that kind of going on. Not, not that you're a geek. Actually, you're <laughs> a super geek. I, I was I'm taking that as a com yes, compliment absolutely. right there. It's a <laughs> but I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's always like, you know, it's a little bit of network management kind of concept here, but it's not pure network management. But we've got some systems here. I mean, I, And then you throw big data in the mix. Yeah, so, so you have yeah, a, a confluence of a lot of things go happening. And I'll say the, what people talk about is real time and faster business cycles, blah, blah, blah. Simplicity in all these value propositions is yeah. where the value is. But underneath it, there's a, there's a, a disruptive 
stuff happening? What would you share? Well, so I think the, the history, you know, the, the opening credits of that movie usually say at the bottom, and then the cost of computing dropped by 10x. <laughs> um, and, and, and everybody still complained. <laughs> <laughs> everybody still complained. And I think that's, you know, we, we take the PC initially, take, you know, client-server client computing, take the growth of, you know, sort of all x86 in servers. Um, it, um, it, a lot of it was all driven by um, dramatic inc architectural changes that led to a dramatic um, reduction in the cost of how things get done in, in an IT organization or any kind of compute infrastructure type of uh, um, situation. Um, the other big factor usually is, okay, now network bandwidth changed in a dramatic way so that now what used to make sense to do one place makes sense to do someplace else. And I think what we're seeing with, what's, what sort of triggered off this trend is first a cost reduction on the core infrastructure, you know, compute, virtualization, performance, the cost of storage has been dropping maybe not as dramatically as, as some of the compute. Um, networking. It's going up now. <laughs> well, volume is, <laughs> volume is going up, but the cost. No, saying, the cost is going up too because <laughs> the, the tide floods. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, so the, the demand goes up, right? There's a lot more need for storage. Um, that, that trigger point happened. The other thing that's, that I would say has happened too is that broadband infrastructure, at least in the developed world, has gotten much, much better. And that's opened up the opportunity to do things in a very, very different way than, than we, they've been done before. And you were talking earlier about the, the cloud service providers, the Facebooks, the Amazons, taking advantage of some of these trends right. and, and innovating. Mm -hmm. um, they are leading the way, uh, mm -hmm. but actually, are they? I mean, will traditional IT operations you know, follow that blueprint, or do they have to take a different path because they're managing much more complexity and many more applications? Well, I think today most of the cloud service providers, the big cloud service providers, have the luxury that they're, um, for the most part, single application sorts of houses. Now that's changing as, you know, when Google added YouTube to their portfolio, that created a whole new set of workloads that they needed to deal with that they weren't before, but, and their infrastructure had to adapt for that. But you're right, they have a less complicated set of problems to solve because they don't have quite so much fragmentation in, at the application so, level. Um, but that doesn't mean that the lessons that they, that they um, learned and that they are, you know, can share with the rest of the industry can't be applied. Can't be applied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And think, you know, security is a is a good example here, where you know, the if you own and control the whole data center top to bottom, and you have great control over everything that's in there, like a Google does, security is not something you're necessarily innovating a lot within the within their data center environment. They're innovating at the edges, certainly. Um, and an IT organization has to solve that problem because they have those pesky users that are inside the firewall that could, could you know, potentially cause problems. Jim, a question for you on the data center. Obviously, the, an area we'd love to talk about. But in, in the old way, obviously, data center, people think of a bunch of servers, got all the gear in there, IT guys you know, wiring the cables up. Mm -hmm. and It's a data center. Um, what's different now that's new to the, the data center world that they have to pay attention to? In other words, that they have to draw up journey and path to that's not a replacement, but an extension of the data center. So let's take the data center as a, from a classic standpoint, lock that in, get some mm -hmm. innovation going on. What's the new stuff that they have to pay attention to? The, the, the architects, the CIOs, that are directly related to their world. What are the key things that you see? Um, so I think uh, a few technology-oriented trends I'll talk to. One, one is um, clearly big, ta big data, you know, is a bu latest buzzword, but there's a lot of new application capabilities that are coming there. New frameworks like Hadoop that'll help drive the opportunity to solve problems they couldn't solve before in terms of data analytics and, and business intelligence. And, and pe people really should be looking at that and how they're going to architect that into the, the data center. The other thing that I think um, is going to be relatively a profound shift is um, the move to non-volatile memory within the data centers. Is, is um, you know the initial phase is a solid-state drive kind of phase, um, where now we have a new tier of storage that can add different performance characteristics than before. Um, as that um, evolves and matures, you'll see other kinds of architectures for non-volatile memory that aren't storage-based architectures that'll change the way applications need to get deployed within within the data center. Um, I think the other big thing is around automation. You know, there's a um, actually an IDC study that says the the um, number of administrators you need scales with the number of 
uh, number of virtual machines you have, not the number of servers you have. So every time you add a virtual machine, somebody's got to administer everything that's inside that virtual machine. Um, so the, the cost of doing that and the need to administer it is um, proportional. It proportional to mm -hmm. how many new applications you create. Mm -hmm. um, so that's got to get solved, right? You have well, to be looking. At, that's a problem, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so, so, that, so that immediately turns around to automation. Right. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so, so, so talk. We have a couple of minutes left. I want to get one last question. I know Dave might want to get a few more. What can you share with the folks out there in our audience about what they might not know about your group? I mean, obviously, you work with all the people building solutions. You know, the, the big, the, the other big guys, mm -hmm. and Intel's a big part of that. It always has been. Um, what can you share with them that's going on now that they might not have seen and and, and written about? or might not be aware about. That's pretty mm -hmm. exciting. Share with them your most exciting highlights. Um, I, I would say, boy, that's a tough one to narrow down. There's a, there's a lot well, of go things crazy. going on. Um, so we're seeing, uh, I think, a shift in sort of media and graphics in how those get deployed in applications. You know, historically, graphics media hasn't been a data center sort of thing, right? It's been um, either a, you know, IPBBX sort of solution sitting in a telecom closet, or it's been a uh, web streaming kind of application somewhere. We're seeing much more growth in those sorts of applications. Um, if you look at VDI, we think that's just sort of the tip of the iceberg of things that are capabilities you can apply where you do some of the processing in the data center, you use some of the processing on local devices, and you can build out solutions that you weren't really able to do before because you can now um, deploy a solution that does some of the processing in the data center, some of the processing locally, and gives an optimal experience for it. Um, those are, those, that's a, I think something we'll see emerging over the next several years. Jim, my question, and I'd love to get a, your technology perspective on this, is, and it relates to the whole vSpecs announcement today, is on the one end of the spectrum, you've got um, simplicity and integration. On the other, you've got this you know, notion of choice and, and mm -hmm. flexibility. Um, can those two worlds ever come together? Is that possible? In other words, can you codify knowledge of, of you know, patterns and workloads and things like that and actually embed it into the systems and automate it in a way that, that I don't have to make that trade-off in the mm -hmm. future? Or is that just always going to be a, 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 a tension that users will have to adjudicate? I, I think it's always going to be a, a tension. We're, Intel's obviously a big believer in openness and standards and the idea that systems would interoperate with, with each other. Even a best of breed world, you know, we, we believe that that's um, uh, an important proposition for, for end users to be able to have some of that choice. So, we're, so we would probably come down more on the open side of the house uh, in, in most of this and in the interoperable best of breed. But there's a real problem that these converged infrastructures are solving, which is the complexity of integration uh, across platforms. That's a, it's a really hard problem. It's driving a lot of cost in the industry. And the, and, and not, the answer won't be the same for everybody. Um, some people will want to have, you know, they'll be able to buy off the, off the shelf a converged infrastructure. Some people will stay best of breed. Hopefully, even the best of breed solutions will get easier to deploy going forward. But, mm. but it's, uh, they're solving a real problem that's out there today. Excellent. All right, Jim. Well, listen, thanks very much for coming inside the Cube. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks and uh, thanks for watching, uh, everyone. We'll be right back uh, after this short break. Just keep it right there. Flash memory is a hot topic these days in both the consumer and enterprise markets. And the prevalence of flash in the consumer world on our mobile phones, tablets, and laptops is beginning to drive down the cost of the technology across all markets. Forbes magazine declared flash to be 2011's technology of the year. And others say that flash is the future of the data center. In 2008, EMC CEO Joe Tucci predicted that the one thing that will change the storage industry more than anything else over the next 10 years is the advent of flash technology. With EMC's recent launch of their new VF Cache hardware and software solution that leverages flash technology and intelligent caching software to dramatically increase throughput and reduce latency, that prediction appears to have come true.
Today we're doing the launch of VF Cash. Everybody's really excited. Obviously, a little bit of press leaks over the weekend, and you know, people looking forward to the new product, the performance capabilities it gives. Well, we got early morning rock bands. We got a little bit of cartoon character fun, and uh, it's good. And, and I think it's, I think the marketing's innovative, and I think the product's innovative. Reaction has been great. You know, press, analysts, and bloggers in the room, which has been great. But the the vast audience is really online. We've had about three thousand people online. Just a lot of good talk about how this is a complement to EMC technology, to VMAX, to VNX, complement to fully automated storage steering. Just taking our leadership of Flash just to the next level. It's really great. Flash is going to transform the look of the data center. In the same way as the consumer experience has been transformed uh, by Apple utilizing Flash technology, I think the enterprise experience is going to be transformed by Flash and EMC is going to be driving it. So VFK is basically taking this exciting new Flash technology and moving it into server in an intelligent way. We marry that, that Flash storage closer to the CPU complex with an intelligent software layer that determines what data should sit in the, in the server closer to that CPU. If you think about it, Flash is over a thousand times faster in terms of IOP capabilities. The performance of a persistent memory, right, at a thousand plus X, right, is really a game changer for many of our customers. But now if we move it close to the server, we're able to make yet another enormous uh, jump in terms of latency, as well as uh, bandwidth and IOPs per gigabyte. So it really is exciting from our customers from that perspective. They get the performance with intelligence, but they also get that protection that they demand in their mission critical application environments. It's a continuation of the, the EMC flash story uh, that we introduced in 2008 when we first introduced flash drives in the VMAX platform. In 2010, we introduced Fast, we introduced VNX Fast Cache. This is another step in that progression. The code name for VF Cache, it was Lightning, and what always follows Lightning is Thunder. So we pre-announced today Thunder, which is essentially server networked flash. So something that's shareable, something that's scalable, still on the server side, but something that can provide literally millions of IOPS to multiple server applications. That's coming next. I'd say it's EMC's commitment to innovating uh, in the core business. We challenge ourselves, we question conventional wisdom, and we're not afraid to come to market with disruptive technologies that, that may have some impact on that core business, but if we don't do that, then we're not going to stay ahead.